it's Wednesday on your view. Welcome to the show. I am Tokwe Mark Odige, and as usual, I have the ladies, my co host. I'm, 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 in, I'm loving this set. I've not seen um, YK, I think, this week. This is my first time seeing you. Mm -hmm. Nima, I saw you on Monday. I don't see you finish already, but I said, Is it finished? Not yet. <laughs> But I'm so happy to see every one of you. Why can you looking pretty? Love your beads. Good morning. Good morning. Ah, the celebration we start on Thursday. We start tomorrow. Um, the art competition, which is at the Kalakuta Museum, and is free. Mm -hmm. So please come and see art. Um, art, the art of a lot of Nigerians. Beautiful. They they always bring their A game, and it's very, very nice. And then on Saturday we have the dance competition, free again. We have 37. This year we have 37. Cost I think because the price uh, money is prizes. rich, you know. Yes, it's, always it's like prizes. one million for the first prize. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, yeah. we dance. I'm needing money, right? <laughs> the school's debate that you for them. Come <laughs> now. Yeah. These people, do you know what they're they, they loaded? They're ah. professionals. They bring, uh, they bring uh, to come and collect one million. Uh, if not me, go. Okay, yes, I will we'll 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 take my head. So, so we've been judging at the school's debate for years, and every year the gifts improves. Mm. So last year, every child got a computer, a laptop, and everything. It's huge. And they will still get their music set and all of that for oh, the school. So, YK, well done, really. Well done. Thank you. Mm -hmm. YK, you haven't spoken enough about the Fela movie on Netflix. Which one is that? That's is it the Formula that 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 No, the Fela Let's on Netflix. Hmm, I've not seen it. As in, I why you? many years ago. Oh, it's a Okay, it just came one. on Netflix now. Yeah, it just okay. came on next week. Ah, we have to see it. You I have to see it. I can't remember what it's about. Please, you need to watch we it. Have to see you it. know, it just makes you think about your life and the meaning that you've given your mm. life mm. in, in for and again. Mm. Um, well, I want to you... shout out to. Yes. I'm just opening birthday messages. Ah. Really. Oh. Yes. I, and I'm very sorry for all those who reached out on WhatsApp. And I stumbled on this message from a 12 year old birthday meet. Mm. Ah. Oh, my heart melted. Oh. She, Talked about, and we will meet. Zohira will meet you by the grace of Allah. Bello Zohira Adeleye. I'm looking forward to seeing her. And I'm also very meet Mama person. Brown. No. Mm. Was until Mr. Brown insisted when they sent me, and I did not open that. Hello, hello. <laughs> and then he prayed for me also. So oh. I'm still, I'll get there. I'll reply all of them eventually. Yeah, but the messages can be overwhelming. Yeah, so How are you doing, I'm, well, I'm still selling my hairs, I'm selling my clothes, I'm selling my Body by BC Marketing. products. Um, prices are going so high right now, and I'm in between, I'm torn in between, um, you know, trying to, should I update my prices or should I just sell at these prices? And I know that when I go back to restock, I won't be getting it at those prices. He's just my conscience now telling me, should I increase these it's prices not, a conscience to save matter. my business or should I just... You know, just yeah, I'm, I've my done, customers and sell I've done review at the price on and two then locations and I'm going to do review on the <gasps> rest because the anyway, cost of sure, by the market we're still selling at the regular price. I'm still thinking and deciding whether I, I have buy to now, public buy now. Anything you it. want to buy, just buy. Please buy now. Every time you delay the prices change. Up, I was yeah. going to buy a motorcycle and for what? I waited for your business. My business Tra moving from one estate to the other by you my staff. Eh? Staff. Are you riding it? No, not me. I, oh. My staff that lives in Ekwe has to go to Foy. But you look like you can ride now. I, I would love to swag it. <laughs> no, Korokwe. Bike can go through when there's rain. The road is bad. There was a 200,000 error difference. In just because I delayed for like ah, six weeks. Let me just oh. look at the price, look at the price, look at the price. Everything is going up. Anything you want to buy? Buy, buy. now. Please. Don't push. No ah. procrastination. Come, Come on, buy now. Saying. You know, my is now. getting married. I've started to buy the drinks down because they ah. say they're going up. Yeah. Better for you. Ah. Um, well. You know, we know you have stories. We know you have experience. So many um, advantage for people to learn from stories that would inspire, or in some cases, stories that you want us to help you resolve and give you options. Please send those stories to options. Come with S. If you don't put the S there, we don't receive your mail. If you also want to reach out to TV, your, your view, that's the way to reach out to us. This is on your screen right now. So munch it, keep it for the. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
Welcome back and thanks for staying with the UN General Assembly. Nigeria welcomes true partnership. President addresses world leaders. And um, in other news, we have the TUC and NLC differ on acts over lockout. In gale of retirement at oil giant. Presidential ele election court. Government targets 20,000 megawatts in three years. Airline trapped funds now at $738 million. What story are we starting with? Okay, so I wanted to take the national grid collapse of the nation. Ah, this report is scary my yacht. Last week we went straight down to at midnight to 42 wow. megawatts. And even the ultra power plant that had about had some megawatts was for they said in the evening that they had come back and they were going to bring power. I didn't trust it, but we had light till daybreak. And this is the third in less than a month continuously. We're having this grid collapse where the transmission company of Nigeria uh, refused to release any thought about the grid collapses mm -hmm. so much. Mm -hmm. I remember taking the think of the investment that we used to meet three times in less than one month. Mm. Let's think of, you know, building now. Let's, if we are, if we are, because I know they will say there's no money. If we have a petroleum sector where we cannot refine at all, we could not take advantage of the crude oil increase. We cannot. We are always suffering from the uh, drop in. in the labor unions over the planned indefinite strike uh, widened yesterday. So the Nigerian Labor Congress and the Trade Union Congress uh, leaders clashed on live television program over the modalities of their action. Yes, they've been disagreeing and they said it was triggered by a claim attributed to the NLC president, Joe Ajero, that the TUC could not back out of a strike without giving notice. Now, we know that they gave the 21-day notice uh, that by NLC to federal government to call its members out, you know, on an indefinite strike, and that is going to be expiring tomorrow. There was also the two-day warning strike by the NLC, uh, which happened uh, September 5th to 6th, and it was boycotted in talks. But um, uh, the NLC president, Ajero, yesterday said that you can see that... Um, uh, they were able to successfully carry out the warning strike. They can work independently. They can also work together if they choose to agree. But, uh, you know, the, the disagreement is whether we mm. there's TUC, there's NLC, and once they don't agree, we may not be no able to get issues. anything yeah, mm. meaningful out of it. We'll take a quick break. When we return, we continue with front page review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Are you Gentlemen. Make welcome Pioneer Positive Force member, dancing queen of the 80s, non conformist, Afrobeat historian, Yeni, Yeni, and if we for Kuti, aka Yay! YK Power! Ginger! Yeah, take it, take it, take it. Yeah, so, I have to answer question. I have to drink. <laughs> We're in trouble today. <laughs> ah, wait, wait till your age. Fellas house wasn't even burnt in 75. Damn. So will I drink out? Ah, you go drink out. Take, take, take. Make I make I help you. Rush on, rush on, rush on. No be half. Which half? You will make me drink. I'll give you a hint. <laughs> Light in in no. Nepa. Nepa Road. Nepal Road! Nepal Road! In Avel Kuta! Ah ah! First of all, my brain cannot uh, memorize everything. A big black bug. A big black dog. Bug. A big black bug. Oh, sorry. A big. <laughs> <laughs> it all starts. Omo! Ah! Hey! Omi Omo Fela! Omi Omo Anikula Pokuti! Oh no, can you check it? It's by Elgin Song, it's not by Elgin Song. Eh? Eh? <laughs> hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, 
women. So if you catch the drift, then you're onto something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens? Come closer. A little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're going to have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review and more conversations on the hot topics. The ladies of Your View and I will be staring up our guests to get in-depth into all the various topics and you, our viewers, will have the opportunity to call in and share your views. After all, it's your view. Join us on Your View, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for a fantastic conversation. Don't miss it. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome the one who can make time stand still forever, Mr. Kelechi Amadi. <laughs> 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 How are you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm good, my brother. You love that intro, Abby. Yeah. It was great. Okay, yeah. Thank we, you. We, we thank try you. like that. Thank you. Thank you. Now my question, which I feel is a cheap question. Oh, go ahead. What does ISO stand for? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Hmm. That is it. I think I'll drink. <laughs> no, you're joking. I'm not joking. Clear your mind. No. <laughs> Shay, you didn't want me. me. You want me no. I think I'll drink. Huh? No problem. Okay. <laughs> I've always known this as ISO. I never bothered to know what it means. I know what it means, but I never really bothered to know what the acronym is. Tell me the, the, the brand of camera that I use so much so that you know, I even became an ambassador. That is that's very easy. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So it, it's, out there. it's supposed to be, yeah. I just said, let me take a give you this one. As a token of my appreciation. <laughs> Sony. Drink! Oh, I'm not done, I'm not done! <laughs> I'm not done, I'm not done, I'm not done! <laughs> you, did not, you, you did not say final answer. You did not, final answer. You did not, you did not ask me if that was my final answer. You don't answer. have any choice again. It's only my how, many, how many cameras do they have? My friend, the drink, I gave you a very easy something. My phone now. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome Pioneer Positive Force member, dancing queen of the 80s, non-conformist, Afrobeat historian in her right, and long-standing member of the multiple award-winning all-female show, Your View, Omoyeni, Yeni, Anifula Fokuti, aka Yay! YK Power! Ginger! Yeah, take it, take it, take it. Yeah, today, yeah, ginger, yeah, ginger, today we'll go here. Hey, hmm. I didn't read you. Are you sure? Ha. Hmm. I know I'm not here to answer questions, I'm here to drink. <laughs> We're in trouble today. <laughs> ah. Wait, wait till your age. I was close now. Eh? I said 1975. He said 73. He said, I said 75. 75. I couldn't. wasn't even born to 75. Damn. So will I drink out? Eh? You go drink. Oh. Take, 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 make I go make I help you. Rush on, rush on, rush on. No be half. Uh, which half? <laughs> you will make me drink. I'll give you a hint. Uh, light in in no. Nepa Nepa Road. <laughs> Nepa Road. Nepa Road. In a Ah ah. First of all. My brain cannot uh, memorize everything. A big black bug. A big black dog. Bug. A big black bug. Oh, sorry. A big. <laughs> <laughs> it all starts. Omo ah eh omi omo fella omi omo anikula pokuti ono pe kini kekele. It's my oldest son. It's not my oldest son. Eh eh.
Ladies and gentlemen, please help welcome to the show, La General, the one and only Pere Egui. Which of the following is false about teeth? Read, read we are born with 20 primary teeth. Hmm. Teeth are the hardest substance in the body. Teeth are the strongest bones in the body. Teeth is not a bone, actually. Teeth uh, teeth uh, can self-repair. The strongest bone in the body. No, teeth is not a bone. Final answer. Teeth is not a bone. <laughs> you know what came to my head now? That sound. <laughs> Crickets. <laughs> So, editor, you can put that cricket sound there. It's very just, it's, you can still put it down too. When was the first Gould Ultimate Search? Editor, don't put any cricket sound. I'm talking, I'm talking. Okay, pair. How many times has Ghana qualified for the World Cup? <laughs> Five times. Hey, you can't do that now. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> Why are you like this? Uh, uh, this is your team. Small, small play they, now. They, they, they will not Somebody be cannot play with you again. They will not be impressed though. The team that you're supporting. And Ghana, Ghana will be alright. Yeah. Last Charlie? Last. Cheers, Charlie. <laughs> This is 7 of 7, my name is OJ and signing a severity into my hands tonight on this social experiment called the 7 of 7 is Owen G! What is the name? Or what was the name? You see that I want to make them better now. Rock Heart. No, of That's the, the of the goats. When they brought it on stage. The name of that goat. Yeah. We should, ah. go, we should go there. No, no, that one, that one, easy now. Uh -huh. I'm just drinking this so that I can ask him my own questions. It's not because of Buga. He didn't get it. You, you know, <laughs> even you know. Okay. <laughs> Mention ten female stand-up comedians in Nigeria. See, just mention their stage name. If you annoy me, you will mention their real names and the year they started. And if you annoy me further, you mention the names of their husbands and the names of their children. Try me now. Okay, okay. mention their name. No, no, let's, name. Name. let's just... Mm. Uh, no, way. No, no, no. 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 Even name, real name, stage name, husband name, children name. Ten even, of them. Even the ten. That's a lot. Eh? That's a lot. Did I cut your question for you? Yes. When well, you were happy now, now. With your hands back. You are wasting time. We don't have time. See, my brother, hmm? before we go on the commercial break, yeah? you are stubborn. And I told you things. The fact that you play this in your hair does not mean. You understand? See this bar here you are looking at. It's experience. I've suffered before you. But I try when you there during the military era of Abacha and Babangi, you Gen know what happened? I be Gen Z. <laughs> so that's Gen Z. I, call for I will move four out of ten. That's like... Four out of ten, they pass it. Come drink this thing. Where booby you are on here? Drink it! If I land you... Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome the Grand Comedian of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Benga the Inca, the first! Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. We're continuing front page review 
with the nation. Um, I know that. Why can we take the story yes, about exit? I wanted to take the story about Philip Shaibu and Governor Obaseki. <laughs> <laughs> So they started to yap themselves again. So um, uh, Philip Shaibu has urged the governor and his allies to say the truth always, <laughs> especially about the lockout. Mm. That, see, eh, that letter, that they, they, they have not sent him letter, that, that letter, they wrote it on Friday. Uh, she Friday 18th, eh? Uh, uh, Friday, sir, <laughs> and then he now received it on Monday. Oh, they he said uh, they, they have to read the. He says um, they bought it with speed on Monday. <laughs> I, I can't find that place. <laughs> they bought it with speed on Monday, and you will know that it was. Uh, it was hurriedly written. Mm. Yes, by the SSG. Run and sign. Mm. He's relocating. Where? where? He said, he said, surprisingly, the letter dated Friday, September 15th, crawled. So him they on Monday. Called him on Monday after the office had been locked. After the office had been locked. <laughs> so, and they didn't get the letter till the evening of Monday. Monday. Ah. But no problem. My only concern right now. I haven't finished. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he said, the embarrassment was avoidable. This is from mm. Shaibu's side now, see? Well, if you are only just giving me the letter quickly, mm. this will not have happened. Mm. Meanwhile, Obaseki's people have not answered. Mm. What is wrong with you? Why are you looking for playing victim now? Stop playing the victim. You are not a victim. He said, uh, <laughs> he said, <laughs> he said and, and also the, the speaking on behalf of the governor of S. Eshon, 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 advocates for good governance. <laughs> but, um, Obaseki should exercise, um, should exercise restraint okay. and stop this incessant blackmail of the governor. Yes. I need to pressure the governor to you to pressure to regard the senatorial zoning arrangement to produce the next governor of the state. Yeah. So mm. he's supposed to be Eshon. You know, me, my, my, my husband, Isha. my in-laws are Eshon. So in our turn, our local. Meanwhile, local. let them give governance to the people of Edo State in between all this quarrel. Let's mm -hmm. hear more stories about that instead of the stories of their quarrel mm -hmm. trending. Pepsi. Yeah, yeah, Pepsi. Let's imagine? move on to the punch. I major, major headline. No, we have to reserve. <laughs> Dangote <laughs> refinery imports crude <laughs> as NNPC swap oil for loans. Wow, that is a hot Huge. topic. Hope you're ready. Dangote expects. Um, crude from NNPCL in November begins operation in October. Tinubu's victory at Tiku Obi file 86 ground appeal at Supreme Court. Niger crisis will put pressure on Nigerian food markets. That's from World Bank. Dollar shortage. Foreign airlines trapped fund hit $783 million. Uh, federal government plans renovation as miscreants vandalize Lagos pedestrian bridges. Hard drunk police, uh, policemen in Lagos invade Lekki shop, arrest attendants and plot charges. Um, Onga, Tinubu Biden condemns school, insists on democracy. So, can we? Okay, um, government plans renovation of as miscreants vandalize Lagos pedestrian bridges. And so, this punch report took inventory of the bridge at so, um, uh, Ladipo Oshodi pedestrian bridge and they interviewed users of the bridge pedestrians who use the bridge and they recounted how of course vandalism is happening there parts of the bridge are being taken away and sold in the report what annoyed me is that everybody excused the stealing hmm. uh, the vandalism as a uh, because of lack of employment wow. and i remember in my own time they taught us use your mind is a terrible thing to, to waste your mind mm -hmm. so you can invent creative ways to earn money but where you uh, akoshile of lagos state the uh, press secretary to the state governor I said that the state government is looking to, of course, renovate these bridges at a cost. I just want to put it out there. You still have government to pay money. Of course, now nah. at a cost. Will they use their blood to renovate the bridges? Yeah. So can I take the power drunk policeman? Or you want oh, to yes. take your story first? Take the power drunk policeman. Or policeman. is the power drunk policeman, actually. They were from the Ikoi police station, and they have been accused of assaulting a worker from Dashmi stores on Mui's Bamire in Lekki. What? Apparently... Uh, the, uh, this lady went to, oh, sorry, let me first say the name of the, they said they were led by one inspector, Fumi Udukoya. 
So apparently, the lady in question went to go and buy a bag from the shop. I think they sell used designer. Mm. She bought this de fairly used designer shop in October 2022. Mm. She now returns a few weeks later and says the bag is faulty. So they took the bag from her and said, okay, we will sell the bag. Once we sell it, we'll give you your yes. money back. She left and went to go and call police. We, and that's how the police now entered her shop on Tuesday morning. And then they started to harass the girl. It is the facility manager that came and saw the police harassment sitting on the girl mm. and punching her. Yes. The shop attendant punching her. I was like, ah, ah. In Lagos. Ah, ah. Lucky. He said, when he saw this, he now locks, and then they wanted to now take the girl out of the shop. So when he saw this, he locked the gate. They now went and called reinforcements. Those ones forced their way in. They stripped the girl naked, hey. took her away. Up till now, well, up till the time of this report. They've not found the girl. She's locked up. They said the woman who bought her just stood and watched as they were beating the shop attendant. They said um, they've locked the shop up, handcuffed the girl after beating her, took her away. The girl is 20 years old. Oh, and she's yeah. still detained at the really police station as a Tuesday evening. And um, then they said there was a, a disturbing twist to the case by uh, accusing the attendant of assaulting the policewoman and her colleague. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, that's what I was yeah, course, yeah. So, we, 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 so sadly, we have to round off um, municipal review. The Dangote refinery will be starting work in October, but because the uh, country, uh, there's, because of a lot of crude oil vandalism and the oil swap deals that we've taken for loans, we've given, we're, using, we're giving oil in exchange for loans. NNPC could not fulfill the arrangement they had with Dangote to give Dangote crude oil for, to refine. So now Dangote has to import I, 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 crude I oil in Nigeria. We have crude oil. We are not meeting our targets. Like we have crude oil. It's been stolen and the ones we have, we are using it to exchange for loan. Then the refinery that can work in Nigeria is importing crude oil in Nigeria. Uh, like, uh, we'll I said, probably on just the start. We'll be, we'll be, like, it's just so weird. Our president in Hungary said that we are open for business so, and we are open for partnership. And, you know, he, 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 spoke, um, he spoke really early the first day of Onga, which shows that there's a respect for our president in globally, and we're hoping that global respect means that they, are, they, do, they play by the books and do what is right by Nigeria. Mm. One of the things he asked for was um, um, that we should have um, our loans because we are heavily indebted. So the president was asking that there be loan waivers, and we're hoping that that is granted to Nigeria because it will help us a whole lot. That's what we can take on front page review for today. When we return, we have a whole lot for you. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. When times are tough, we know that. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together a cocktail or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it. Women. So, if you catch the drift, then you're onto something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities, right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome Pioneer Positive Force member, dancing queen of the 80s, non-conformist, 
Afrobeat historian in her right and long-standing member of the multiple award-winning all-female show, Your View, Omoyeni, Yeni, Anifula Pokuti, aka Yay! YK Power! Ginger, yeah, take it, take it, take it. Yeah, today, yeah, ginger, yeah, ginger, today we'll go here. Hey, hmm. I don't read you. Are you sure? Ha. Hmm. I know I'm not here to answer questions, I'm here to drink. <laughs> We're in trouble today. <laughs> ah. Wait, wait till your age. I was close now. Eh? I said 1975. He said 73. He said, I said 75. But that's why I wasn't even born till 75. Damn. So will I drink out? Eh? You go drink. Go. Take, 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 make I go make I help you. Rush and rush and rush and not be half. Eh? Which half? <laughs> you will make me drink. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. Lights in in no. Nepa, Nepa Road. Ah! <laughs> Nepa oh. Road. Nepa Road. In a Ah ah. First of all, my brain cannot uh, memorize everything. A big black bug. A big black dog. Bug. A big black bug. Oh, sorry. A big. <laughs> <laughs> it all starts. Omo ah. Hey, Omi Omo fella. Omi Omo Anikola Pokuti. Oh no, baby, can you check it? It's my audio song, it's not my audio song. Eh? Eh? <laughs> <laughs>
Um, planning your financial future is a fundamental step towards achieving your dreams and securing your well-being. I love talking about money. Just like learning the alphabets is a foundation for reading and writing. Understanding the ABCs of investing is essential for financial literacy. So today, we will delve into the intricacies of investing, things that we should look out for when considering investment. And joining us today is FBN Quest Asset Management. It's the Vice President um, Affluent Emmanuel Echeme. <laughs> so I was wondering if, because you know, we, we have different names. Emmanuel Echeme, welcome to the show. Thank Good to you. have you. Thanks for having um, me. I'm looking forward to this conversation. I love talking about money. I love talking about how to grow my money. money. So um, from your perspective, what is investment and what role does it play in the financial sector? Okay, thank you very much. So investment is that um, deliberate act of spotting opportunities hmm. in, and, and committing your resources. And in this case, we are talking of financial resources. So committing your financial resources to financial asset with the aim of generating returns in the form of um, capital gains or income. So basically, that is what investing hmm. is. And it plays a very important role in the financial uh, sector generally. I mean, investing aids growth and development. Um, the reason why the capital market exists in the first place is basically because of investing. So the capital market is a place where buyers and sellers of financial assets meet, you know, to sell their, uh, their product in mm. form of stocks, bonds, currencies and the likes so corporates go to the capital market to raise funds to finance their project their, 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 their programs also the government goes there also to raise funds uh, to finance budget so for people who provide these funds to the users of the funds they pay a premium in the form of interest coupons in one form or the other and that is the uh, the benefit for those people who lend their monies to the users of money. So investing plays a very pivotal role in the financial system. Mm, awesome. Okay. So um, what should people invest and how does it empower their financial future? Okay, so investing is actually an aspect of um, uh, financial uh, planning. It's, it's, it's an aspect of planning. And you know what they say about planning? If you fail to plan, you already to plan fail. to fail. Mm -hmm. I think it was uh, Warren Buffett that said, and I'm paraphrasing now, that um, if your money can't work for you while you sleep, then you will work for your money till you die. Mm. Um, I mean, we all have laudable objectives that we want to achieve in life. Um, I don't want to be a liability when I grow old. I want to live in the best houses. I want my children to go to very good schools. I want to drive that dream car. I want to be able to go on vacation when I, I want to. So how will all of this come? It won't happen if it remains in the realm of wishes. Mm. Because if wishes were horses, beggars, beggars will ride. Right. So I have to take that deliberate step to make sure that I commit my resources to investing opportunities in the market and make sure that my money is working for me. Sure. And it doesn't matter how small I start. And I'm saying this to everyone. It doesn't matter how, I mean, your le what your level is today. I mean, start from where you are today. Mm -hmm. The next best time, if you had not been investing to invest, is now. Mm -hmm. So start from wherever you are. And at FBN Quest, I mean, we don't discriminate. We have uh, clientele cutting across every segment of, um, uh, I mean, uh, every strata in terms of whether you are high net worth or whether you are low income earner. We have investment solutions for you. So... Um, start from where you are, and if you are investing, you are not sure what you're doing, speak to us at FBM Quest. We will be able to profile you and put you in the right investment bucket that we think will suit you and meet your investment uh, objectives. So yeah. having said that, uh, what are the different types of investments mm. and um, how can people know which is best for them? Okay, so there are different types of investments. I mean, there are investments that carry high risk. There are investments that are medium risk and low risk. There are investments that are short term, there are investments that are medium term, and there are investments that are long term. 
So you need to understand your investor profile to know which one suits you. And that's why we are saying talk to us. When you come to us at FBN Quest, we profile you. We understand your investor profile. We understand your risk profile. We know your objective of investing. And we are able to put you in the right investment solution that will help you meet your financial needs. Hmm. Nima. Okay. I heard him talk about capital markets. So I'm wondering, is investing in mutual funds the same thing as investing in stock um, markets or shares? Okay, so mutual funds are collective investment scheme, uh, you know, that are managed by professional fund managers. Um, the good thing with um, mutual fund is that it can be structured mm -hmm. from any segment of the capital market, whether the fixed income space or even the equity space. So we have um, equity-based mutual funds. Mutual funds that invest in equity are equity-based uh, mutual funds. And so you can invest in equities through a mutual fund. You can also invest in equities uh, directly. At FBN Quest, we have a mutual fund, the Smart Better Equity Fund, that has returned, I mean, a total of about 52.3% year to date. Mm. And I heard you talking, I mean, while I was listening at the lobby, you were talking about uh, inflation mm. and the need for people to buy uh, what they want to buy on yeah. time. Mm -hmm. So this is the kind of investment that beats inflation, inflation, quite frankly. But of course, um, you would earn this kind of returns if you had stayed with us from the beginning of the year. Mm. So year to date, it has returned uh, uh, 52.3 and inflation I think is about 25.8% uh, currently. Wow, okay. So I wanted to ask um, what does the FBN Quest asset management, what role do you play in helping people to get involved? What do you offer investors now and how can somebody get started? Somebody has watched you and is feeling like okay, maybe this is a vehicle I can use to grow my wealth. So how can they go ahead with using um, FBN Quest asset management? So we, we, we can be contacted. We can be contacted via all our, our channels. I mean, you can reach us on uh, all of the social media. We, 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 we are on all the social media platforms. And our handle on social media is at, at FBN Quest. At FBN Quest. And you can also, I mean, check our website, um, www.beyond today.fbnquest.com and you can also um, call us on our numbers as are displayed on the screen. We have two numbers there. 081-3372-6661 or 080-3922-3371 uh, Our um, professionals, our colleagues will be waiting to receive your calls and as soon as you call, someone will speak to you and uh, we can have appointments to further the conversation on how we can onboard you and make you a customer for you to begin to enjoy the benefits of investing with FBM Quest. Thank you so much for coming on um, the show today, educating. Everybody needs to learn about money and um, I teach it on Mondays, we talk about it here on the show like on Wednesdays. I don't like, money loves me more. Thank and you. And I think that's me. much more important. Yeah. Um, however, we need to plan. I love your quote. And I think if people did not hear it, we should repeat it again. Because we don't want to work till we die. So we need to make sure we find a way to make our money work for, for us. us. So um, thank you once again, Mr. Emmanuel Ocheme. And um, we'll hope to see more of you. Maybe other perspectives of how to invest. Thank Stay with us. Much. We'll still have a whole lot for you on the show. And if you missed out on what the numbers it's still right on the screen right now. They'll put it back on the screen so you can munch it and reach out to them. We'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll continue with the show. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. It's not just where, but who wouldn't you want to work with? Yes, that's on that angle. So I had a very, very interesting... <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't want to work with who? No There's no judgment. No, and I respect, oh, judge you I respect this judge you. certain type of people. But what I dislike so much is when you, they tend to come to work and then they pour all their... Resentments from On them. you. Is it me that offended you? <laughs> I'm not the one. I have no business. My just come out with you, pay me at the end of the month and let me go back to my house in peace and sleep. 
but when it comes to like divorced people i cannot work with a divorcee i can't see myself doing that if i find out if you can hide this one but if i find out when they're nice divorcees i would just what if they are nice okay now it depends if you are nice cool but if you are the type that you don't know how to keep your anger to yourself you always throw, you always pour it on somebody well i'll not drop my resignation letter no matter the amount you're paying me so you <laughs> more passive aggressive people yeah i can't do it i'm so sorry oh, definitely and i cannot work with stingy people ah see this one because you cannot be passing me in the morning afternoon i can say Oh, hi, yeah, I'm okay. Oh, yeah, take 100 naira. Take 10k. Take 15k. You don't have to be my sugar, daddy, daddy, my sugar daddy or sugar mommy. Wait, wait, see, the way you treat others is the way they will treat you outside. Yeah. And if you cannot treat your workers well, they are not a good boss. If you cannot be dashing me small, small thing or giving me donuts when I'm when I'm working, you are not a good boss. <laughs>if I want to ask questions and if it's something that I saw coming I may not even ask questions mm. I mean just you
I may even tell you I saw this. What if, what if it's in person? Mm-hmm. But then, would it make a difference where? So, like, this person might just say, you people can't just be on third me language. <laughs> on a bike. <laughs> and the person say, babe, I cannot do it again. <laughs> and you lose range. <laughs> So, what would oh change? God. What would change the scenario? For, like, does it matter where? Do you want to have like a fancy dinner, hey, like the film you were mentioning? No, 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 no. Like, about. Then, or right. do you want to be on the street? No, carry me. Don't fancy dinner. Or even just on a road for treadmill. Or you're not a treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> or you're not a job. Don't tell you, you're loose for your web. No, don't turn that. Same thing, mother. So, what? Which, which would it be? Because I'm like. In person, you have the closure that you want and a few injuries. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> that, that's one place. It could be inside the car. You can sit inside the car. Why car? Why place. not bike? Who will be driving? Why bike? Who will be no, driving no, at the this car point? will be stationary. Pray I'm not the, the one driving. The car will be stationary. <laughs> because I'll go, I'll go mass at them. You can't be told me like that. I'm going to drive near water where we're You must be considered. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. So uh, on Hot Topic today, the story we're talking about has me, my heart beaten. It's a really sad story about a young boy whose intestine was cut out. He got a visit from the governor and we're just, we're, we're, we're talking about the we the people perspective. There was another video that surfaced about a man that is in Plateau State, this doctor runs a hospital where they said he offered cheap services to many people in Jaws and the doctor will go there only to find out that he's been harvesting organs of people illegally. How do we deal with the fact that Nigeria is shifting towards a place where the end justifies the means? Any, any taking advantage of the vulnerable, taking advantage of people that we, don't, we, we know might not be informed and lording our space, our authority over people negatively. We're going to be discussing it. We'd like to, you to join the conversation by calling us on 081-076-41679 or you can call us on 090-241-63440. Now, we're going to be making different perspective. What can the government do to strengthen the institution that protects the, the average citizens of Nigeria? How do we reduce cases of organ Illegal organ harvesting. Um, who, who, who should we talk to when we find this kind of situation has happened? How do we get justice for them? How do we strengthen the um, civil service, I mean, civil society to clamor for justice for them? There are different angles. But YK, when you heard the story about the boy whose intestine was removed, what was your first um, My response? My first reaction, to be very honest, was horror. Because last week I had read about this lady in Plateau State who complained of her doctor said she had appendic- appendicitis yeah, and took her in for a one hour operation. They were there for seven hours. <laughs> After she came out of hospital, she started falling ill. Every time she goes, they will give her painkillers. Yeah. But the pain, did not, the pain did not go. So she went to another doctor. And that one found her kidney. That one had to ask her, did you have any operation? She said, no. Ah, you, have, you have only one kidney. So apparently that guy had taken out her kidney to harvest. You know, I, it's horri- horrible. Horror, these are horror stories. Exactly. For money, you will um, 
remove the life of, of, of in, not even fast, slow, painful death. <sighs> slow, painful death. Where are our values? And you know what she said? That doctor, I don't know about this, because this one, they haven't even found out who removed his intestine. He said it was the work of the devil. Eh? <laughs> but he was profiting from the work of the devil. Mm. Even the devil self go the Don't tire. Why now? Why? Mm. The devil self will shock. So this young boy, Akin Bright, his mom had done a video where she called on the uh, governor Sawolu to come to her head. And at the time, I even thought, because the way the video sounded was that it happened at Lassos. It was later on it became uh, open. I'm trying to get the name of the hospital. He initially was admitted that before he was moved to Lasso. And I think in between he was also moved back. But the governor responded immediately. He visited, he committed to his treatment. The House of Assembly visited him like last week. And then this morning, the poor boy died. <laughs> Very young life that could have, you know, been he could, he anybody could in this world. Cancer. He could solve you don't know the solution the, to the world's problem that boy has been created to solve, but in your wickedness, that devil minding his own business, you mm. say tissue to sell his organs because they took his small intestine was reported to have been missing. Oh. And what I would like is a proper investigation of all the facilities. All the hospitals. He was hospital facilities, even the lab where they took, take blood tests. We should investigate it everywhere he ever he been. was he has ever been because this. Was why Uni Umore was killed in Akwaibom. This has been happening in different ways. The one YK said, when we took the story, I was still on the break. I remember in my house thinking, how is this possible? That you have a hospital, a doctor, and you went to a vulnerable community where you will be giving them free health care, just harvesting, harvesting. A simple appendicitis that takes a, maybe an hour, pata pata, you will so do for eight hours. Eight hours. So you even know, find out that the man read economics. So. The hospital. That man is not a ah. medical doctor. He read economics. You see him? He just learned yeah. how to butcher. He read economics, yeah. And took on fake license to be practicing and deceiving people. It's here. Yeah. Um, I, I personally feel that there are some things that we need to put our foot on. I see countries who have been able to make changes. And I see how they use terror and fear to hold the people down from committing this sort of crimes. And I think that's the best way because um, after inv investigation is good, at least so that you don't uh, punish the wrong person for mm -hmm. the crime. Mm -hmm. But when that person is finally caught, kill him, buy him, okay. take that person Where's out. China? Let people know that if you are caught in this kind of crime where you are taking another life for greed or whatever you want to profit, you are going. So they will decide to if they want to continue on that business, hoping that they will not be caught, and the day they are caught, and that's it. That's the only way, because these people have... It's, it usually works like a syndicate. Mm -hmm. They have people who are learning from them. They have young people who are understudying them, who will be planning on taking up the business, you know, set themselves up in, using other people to profit here, yeah. killing people to profit. And we do the thing, we send them, maybe they are found guilty, you send them to jail, they do five years, ten years, maybe a, a government comes one day and decides to, you know, set people free, or there's a jailbreak, and these people escape. We cannot give them that escape. This is wickedness to humanity, and it must be handled the same way. And if we really want this to stop, that's the only way to go. It's not everything that democracy will work for. It's not everything that would have to sit down at the table and negotiate. There are some crimes against humanity that you must follow the same way. That's just my own judgment on the matter. And we all need to be careful. We all need to seek. There are certain things I go to the hospital for, and I always seek second opinion. But can everybody afford to seek that second opinion? Some of these people are just barely trying to make ends. They will go to this hospital that is trusted. If you go to those local areas, you see those small, small mushroom clinics that... The women trust, everybody trusts, the villagers trust, they just go there to help themselves and you sit down and you do this to a fellow human being and you say we should have conversations and negotiations and send you to jail. No, no, you deserve more than this jail. Sort of things would even discourage people. I know someone who when she's sick, she, she won't go to no paracetamol. Mm. She doesn't take it. She doesn't use any or yibo anything. She will wait it out with her water. The worst case, she will cook her agbo. She said she will place that way. 
and she and her parents live for long and she's so healthy at her age over 60 wow. you would not even know her age let's talk about her body on the because volume. of things like this when they hear it they'll be like god forbid mm. someone said to me once ah, is it not gas that burns somebody's son i can never use gas in my house in that house when we visited that old woman when i was a young girl everybody was forced to use charcoal pots not even a uh, stove because of her fear. So we should think of, you know, how this would discourage people. This is why some women will say, let me have my child at home. I'd rather, you know, not even considering that there are other risks that might happen. Yeah. We should, we, we must do, we must make deterrence yes, through, uh, you know, punishment. And it's not just uh, killing. Let's investigate properly. Yes. Exhaust, you know, the time of that the law has granted a person and be certain. But when that person is found, found guilty, let the punishment be so strong it would discourage for, for, people for some are very obvious for some it's very obvious the plateau state story the woman went in she's having stomach pain you said you were going to do a surgery called append um, to remove the appendicitis you removed her kidney stay eight hours it is that one is very clear without her permission so we have a law in nigeria supporting organ donation you can donate your organ in nigeria you just need to be 21 years you need to be above 21 and you need to give permission that's all. So we have that law. So organ donation should, not, should be encouraged because obviously there's a market for organs. That's the thing. Because whenever we're trying to... I did a course a few years back on conflict resolution and mediation. And they said whenever you want to resolve an issue, you need to find what's benefiting the issue. What are the causes? So that you don't try to cure the effects. The effect we're seeing is criminality mm -hmm. of organ harvesting. But we, when we find what's the problem, there's a market for organs organ donation organ markets so we need to create a system of organ donation let me, let me, and maybe when people die say i know properly. when people die people we should be able donate. to donate like yeah. upon death organ is donated we don't have that system i, I watched the movie they say once you die my organ we can be harvested as in and given free people maybe we need to give their bodies that for system. study mm -hmm. uh, let it be documented why is our former senator in the prison in the UK. Okay, the Madu story is exactly Failure to document. Mm. So organ harvesting, uh, organ donation might be legal. Mm. Organ harvesting is still a crime. And there's a thin line. Between that both. thin line is, is my brother, I want to help me. So don't sign. Don't he will sign. now call, carry him across. If in Nigeria, is my neighbor, I wanted to do appendicitis. But when I reached there, I saw it was a kidney. Uncle, abort mission. Yes, yeah, so close Don't up. continue. Close that up. Close up, oh. We have a caller. Ayodele has called in. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Ayodele. Uh, yes, good morning. How are you today? Uh, what do you this, think? Uh, you? Uh, what you are discussing today, this organ adventure, mm. it is a uh, against humanity. Yeah. It is purely against humanity. Mm. And uh, a lot of them are not even good upon humanity. It is Mm. All these things come down to we don't have a proper recording of the advisor. You can imagine an economy becoming a doctor and harvesting uh, into the organ. This there has been a way of check and balancing. If it, in Nigeria, we don't have a follow up, we don't have a supervision, mm. we don't see where we can check ourselves and know what is going on. Hmm. A lot of people, a lot of our, our what do I call it, ministry or all this, it may return somebody an errand, no follow up, no submission. So we don't actually know what is happening to you. So that is why a lot of people fear to go to government hospital or this. That's why they follow government hospital. And they are not the house of lot of situation. Thank you, Yodile. Praying on the vulnerable. Mm. Um, this is not carried out by trained doctors. Mm -hmm. So, uh, because I said earlier that all oh, the uh, medical doctors have taken this, um, um, what they call it, hi hi hypocratic, the hypocratic oath. Yes, hypocratic the, the, oath. Oath, the oath they take. This oath they take prevents them from causing harm to mm. any patient or any human being. But these people, the one in Plato was not done by um, a medical doctor. It's a like quack. Yeah. It's a quack and it was carrying out surgeries. Many of this um, stuff are not carried out by professional doctors, but we're praying on the vulnerable. What that means is, we know these people cannot afford to go to an expensive hospital. They are not educated or learned. And so, in taking advantage of them, you know if you say, this is what I want to do for you, they cannot go to the lab to go and verify or to read 
if this is what the test actually shows and then you carry out something different on them. We also know that there was a case of baby factories where we, people were being kept to produce babies for other them. people. There's also the attitude of medical practitioners when they don't want to explain. <laughs> so I went to a particular lab to have a procedure done and I had gotten that referral from a doctor friend who said this is the best in the field. And when I got there, it wasn't covered by any of my plans. So I said, okay, I will pay out of pocket for this procedure. The person gave me an attitude that I regretted while I paid. Wow. My doctor, Dr. Dedekon, will sit you through before and any explain. procedure and explain. explain. In fact, sometimes just to get, get bored, that do the thing I've already experienced before. <laughs> he will still be breaking it down. The role of your uh, self, the role how, how it will affect your life, your family, your well-being, everything detailed. And it was the, the you must encourage that. to see. Even though we are in a hurry in our public hospitals, can we also insist that's the standard? Let people understand exactly what you're doing for them and let them be clear before they sign or commit to anything. Now, no, I we're talking about those that are The interested. hospital suspected for this. It's a private hospital called Obitox Medical Center in Alimosho area, carried by punch. And the government can do something for this boy. Because now there's an Actually, hashtag they trending. find out that that's where... He did, a, he did a surgery there before he was referred to Lasso. Oh. The mom's oh. video said it happened at Lasso. Lasso denied. So mm. every investigation needs to be done fast. Be done fast oh, as fast as possible. Mm. Let's take a call. I mean, I called in from Joss. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Now, I have um, Sope, I have Nima, I have Obialiju and Whitey on the show. I regard what is happening in Joss. I'm a medical personnel that is supposed to start a job in this same hospital. But I notice that there's always dead people every day. There's virtually no day you don't account for dead in that <laughs> hospital. Dead, yeah. People are dying. That was why I had to hold on. Mm. My, my husband and I had to hold on that. Let me not start my job yet, dear. Mm. Now, do you know as I'm talking to you now, there's no arrest so far that has been made? No, no. The only question is, and this, 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 this so-called doctor is supposed to be, is assumed to be, or how would I put it now, is a, a pastor. He's also a pastor in the Redeemed Church. Mm. Hey, well, mm. This ignorance. Yes. Mm. <laughs> well, this man, I mean, I, I need to put it out. Um, the punch carried information nine hours ago that the police command in Plateau has arrested two other medical personnel involved in organ um, harvesting by the quack. This morning, yes. yes. I have mm. Do so, you know we have two other people from this same hospital mm. that went for scanning and their organs are missing? Yes. No. So what, what we're hoping no, is, because, you know, because you mentioned that they haven't arrested anybody, I needed to also ensure that we're able to inform people that the, the arrest has taken place. Arrest is not all we want. We want justice. We want judgment. We want prosecution we to want be justice. end. Because finding this woman's case, we want justice. This woman has been going back and forth, back and forth. This idiot has been giving her pain relief. <laughs> So sorry, um, Amina, thank you so much for calling on the show. I'm happy that you had the sensitivity to step out. But let's talk about other nurses and doctors work who there. work there, mm. who are qualified nurses, who are seeing things, mm. but are now looking out. away and saying, I don't know how to speak no, you concerning this. Seven, Let, you see something evil like that, criminal, not mm. even evil, because not everything evil is criminal, happening. And, and you, you do not see anything. There, mm. And you say you did not and see you're anything. you're comfortable. You do not say anything. You need to end you, you have Let's aided and abetted. Come back. I'll come ah. to my key. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome the Grand Comedian of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Benga the Inca, the first. <laughs> OJ right here, seven of seven, like you already know. Benga right here, seven of seven, like I'm beginning to know. <laughs> mm. Mm. It's now time for the question. You don't scare me one bit. Bata bata, I go drink. So, okay. so now one chance for you to. My, My first question. question. Do you remember the names? of the winners of that edition 
of StarQuest. Of course I do. Why uh, do you? And I, and, I, and, I, and I hate myself for this. Because I have this question for you. Final question. No. Where, where outside Nigeria and what year? I think you're the only one that can be wicked. I am thinking because I know back in the day. Don't think, oh, don't think. Answer my question quick, quick. You are thinking too much. I don't like it. The UK. Final answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I said, God, God, please. Let me to perform outside Nigeria. Wait, 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 wait. And wait, wait, God wait. gave me a trip, a show in Ghana. <laughs> drink, my friend, drink, drink. Drink, drink, drink. I don't, I don't, I don't overthink this thing. See where I can. Yes, you overthink him. I will say you can't walk. <laughs> Let's can't walk. Now. Where are we? No, that's not can't walk. That's, that's good. That's good. That's <laughs> Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move way in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known, for when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking advocating, protesting, as the arts are meant to be. Ladies and gentlemen, multiple award-winning actor, producer, ambassador of Edo people, we have Etinosa Idemudia in the building! <laughs> Don't be first to go police station, they win the case. Is so she? you don't, you are showing no, yourself. No, I don't, I don't see that's my second question. You are feeling like a, a contact the prancing peacock. I'm about to cut your wings, hello? Now, in the amalgamation of 1914, who was the woman that. Who said, who drew the line of the amalgamation? Yes. Who is the report? Who is the person that used to say, what is it? That woman. <laughs> that, that, ah, ah. Yeah, that you have done me dirty. I've marked your face. I've marked your face if anything happened to me today. I don't, I don't if I don't reach my house. Anyway, I'm going to be shuffled, so. Mm. You remember now, have you? <laughs> yeah, but you never too thin, man. Um, now you remember. Hey. If a person who indulges habitually in watching a sexual material is called a voyeur. That's what I'm called. <laughs> <laughs> you clearly don't even get the hey. next one. Hey, hey, a voyeur. A voyeur. Then go on. Cool. What is a person who makes one? A called? voyeur. <laughs> a voyage. <laughs> a bon voyage. Come closer. 
little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're going to have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review and more conversations on the hot topics. The ladies of Your View and I will be staring up our guests to get in-depth into all the various topics and you, our viewers, will have the opportunity to call in and share your views. After all, it's Your View. Join us on Your View, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for a fantastic conversation. Don't miss it. Hmm, so, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues and last but not the least a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate and yes you guessed it women Thanks for staying with us. We're still discussing the issue of organ harvesting in Nigeria, the cases of um, the late young boy who lost his life um, where his, his small intestine was taken out, and the case of where, what happened in Jaws, where um, obviously we know that um, a lady went for a surgery called appendicitis, and in actual fact what happened was her kidney, kidney was, was taken removed. out organ harvesting. How do we solve the problem? How do we, how do we get the government to solve the problem? How do we get we people to step up? Before we went on a break, we got a call from Amina. Amina was saying that she was supposed to take a job in that hospital, but she realized that there were reports of daily I deaths. Become an they, it, yeah, they become an abateur of human beings. There were daily deaths, and her husband was saying, mm -mm, this is not the place you should go work. and work. And I asked the question, there are other medical practitioners who are working in that hospital. What ahead. should they have done? Why came? I wanted to take this tweet from Yasmin Maman before I say anything. My cousin's two-year-old son has been sick and upside down since a hernia surgery in the same mm. jaws. He can't walk nor talk. Mm. Very, very sick. Screams a lot at night. I recently asked him to do a scan, ASAP. Mm. So that this poor child seems to be a victim. Ew. Do you know how many people that this hospital, I, I hope that they have closed it down. It obviously they've closed down. That's they've the first, down first step. Yeah. Then look for all the patients because, and then I think, I believe that the government should take responsibility. Yeah, for this. Because this kind of hospitals cannot be practicing in your Before. state. So, that's happening. another angle. Yeah, and, so and, and let me let finish. Me okay. And nothing is done about it. Mm, we have a son. Mm. Okay. You have a call? Hassan, yes. Hassan has called uh, okay. from Take the call and continue. Yes. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Hassan. Welcome to the show. Um, what happened in Plato is uh, something that uh, we fall for our empathy. Mm. But unfortunately, this country we lack like empathy. And even the government looked the other way around. Because I see reason why a fat doctor should be operating unhindered for many years without people responsible catching up with him. What is the job of medical and dental council of Nigeria? What is the job of people, even, even the law enforcement agent in society? Look, we are getting away with a lot of things because we are lawless in this country. We don't care. Even what happened to a ceremony, it was because the England, the English people, are empathetic people. That is why you are seeing that. That is why you are seeing that. A very man who is facing the music over there. Had it been, if it was here in Nigeria, we could have been working freely in our society. And even our sons will stand by him to defend him to any level. So, 
It boils down to the government. Thank you, Hassan. YK, you can continue. Um, yes. So, I think that the government has to take responsibility for all these patients because it happened in their state and they are not monitoring. You, you don't just allow people to open well, private hospitals. A popular hospital. Not, the hospital is popular. And they are not, not regulate. You, you know, there and check. Continuously. People are dying. Me, me I've, I, my family, we have suffered from this health care. When Nima was talking about her friend that doesn't go to hospital, I resonated with her because me, I'm Before sick. You, you see me, I will lie on my bed. Me. But by the time I lie down, I will get better. Yeah. I don't go. I try my... Oh, it has to be very serious, like to take. Before you see me <laughs> where I, there is any doctor. Because I don't trust them anymore. Hmm. My, my brother, his, his, his daughter. They, they, they did they, the surgery. A private hospital. They said they must do surgery on that, that poor girl. Hmm. Now today, her leg is still... is even worse than when, they, when she yes. went into hospital. No, nobody is taking responsibility for it. You take them to court, YK. So, um, that's, that's how they that's, created um, the system. Which court? The money you spend on your husband? Mm. Ah. That, Please, they will just chop your money. You will, you will spend you 10 years justice. in court. Mm. So, first of all, um, that doctor, especially the one in Joss, did not work alone. There's no way you can carry out an operation without having people beside you. You have mm -hmm. scrub nurses. You have other people. They were all aware of what was going on. And that is why I'm going to say now that that hospital, aside from being closed, and the doctor being arrested, every single soul who works there will be taken into custody for questioning. Mm. They were all there. And that's also to deter people who aid and abet. Because sometimes we feel, ah, I'm not the one that is doing the evil now. If I see, I can remove my face. Mm. Now you know that if you I'm see working for my and you do not say anything, you will be in. You will be taken as well. You are, you are the, exactly, yes. you are the same person. It's you are the same thing with the person who is happened. committing the crime. So that place has to be locked up. Those people are arrested. Then the government is a shame that you would allow this kind of business flourish. The local government is a shame. We need to find out that local government where that uh, hospital is situated is a shame that this will be happening under your nose and you're not aware there are no checks, there are no regulations, nothing. An economist is constantly making money out of people, killing people and making money out of them, and nobody could sense it till this woman started crying out. It's a shame. The government needs to do better. You, you raised the question of um, you know, asking... Letting the doctors explain their procedures, asking, because we are learned people. We can always go and say, please, what is in the syringe? What is this? The vulnerable people, who would explain to them? That's why the government needs to sit up to protect their lives. Because if you don't protect them, nobody can. And that's why these people are taking advantage of these uh, young, young people, people, vulnerable people, poor there, people who, who don't have any help. We have a call. Oh, Anthony, has, uh, Anthony has called from Delta. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Uh, the team. My name is Anthony. Uh, the team is, I'm a registered no. Okay. Besides. And the problem we are having uh, presently in the court, we have not even seen anything yet. Huh. It has shown that a lot of medical personnel are living because we've not seen doctors and all of that. And if you go to the private hospital, now I speak with you, most of them are being manned by quacks. I had an experience from two years ago when my first son was given rejection. Mm -hmm. Instead of a two year old child being given by two mystery needles, he was given by ten mystery that there was a crack in the bone. And I know the doctor. Well, at that time before, the years came up. So I met the doctor, I told him people that I know you are using a quack, quack nurses. Hmm. And if I have been around, my wife has not taken that my child to that hospital. But as God will have it, as the time was doing it, over, over the problem we are having is the government. Hmm. The government hmm. is not doing anything hmm. to monitor the hospital. You see, private hospitals, you see, quacks, and the, the problem we still have with it, the problem is that. Many people, they don't go to government hospitals. Government hospitals are always saying... Government hospitals is full. It's full. It's full. It's not full. Give me consultation in the next six months. And every other place. They, they, they are not good hospitals. It's full. So, government is doing supervision. You know, people don't go to the hospital to check their license. You know, they are working there. And they're supposed to remove the license every three years. And yet, they don't do that. They don't survive. Thank you so much, Anthony. What's the role of the enemy? 
in ensuring that anybody not fully licensed and qualified does not practice within the states. Okay. What's the role of those, uh, the body for the nurses as well? Why do we have nurses who will say, hey, I just saw the auxiliary, I can open shop, and then you use syringe and needle to remove boy? So that's, that, that was it. The boy, that, she, he said the two-year-old boy, the injection should have been um, two, two, tiny, the tiny yeah, two, 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 two inch, two and they used the ten, in, a ten. big one and pierced the boy's and, and bone. And broke his bone. Oh, the boy, oh. So, quacks, we, we need to deal with the regulation and perspective, and we're out of time. We, we honestly can't finish this conversation. It's not just brain, brain drain. Brain drain is just one part of it. Brain drain might be compounding it, but the issue we number one friends. is we, need to, we have vulnerable people that are not educated, yeah. and they are a majority. They cannot question the, the certificate the on the difference. board. Yeah. I cannot go into a hospital and see the certificate and know that it's a fake government one. Regulation. So government regulation Health is extremely is important. And that's what I'm saying. And we are depending a lot on this... Um, 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 mushroom hospitals. Mm. We have mushroom schools. We accept them. We have mushroom hospitals. We accept them. We can't continue. We have half-baked education, half-baked healthcare system. We have but to round up. No we really have to round. We have regulatory bodies. People are collecting salary. Every every state has regulatory bodies and, and collecting salaries. I know. I'm so not we should start holding have. them accountable. I'm saying is the regulatory body which we, yeah. we should hold accountable now? Yeah. These people should not be. Uh, in the meantime, let your relative enter hospital theater with you. Don't go alone. Yeah. Yeah, we, we don't so allow. We, we don't allow anybody that there. Don't do your surgery, your procedure there. Will I know they are removing kidney or whether they are? Don't do your procedure. Oh. Don't Nima. do your procedure. Will I know? Even me that I'm educated now. Talk will I know they are removing kidney or they are removing? I say if now, like, even if they want to help you to drink water, I'll carry relative that the eye will open I'm inside. I'm, I'm, so, I'm, I'm yeah. we're sadly out of time on this. We have a woman that we love that we need to bring it on the show, and our heart goes out to the family of the young boy really goes out to the family, to the poor woman who's having to bury um, her son based on the fact that the doctor or the medical system did not work. That's all we can take. We'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll bring in the woman we love. Stay tuned. Your view will be right. Just a 7 of 7. My name is OJ. and signing a severity into my hands tonight. On the social experiment called the seven of seven, it's Owen G. What is the name? Or what was the name? You see, I don't. I want to make them better now. Rock Heart. No, of That's the, the of the goats when they brought it on stage. The what? name of that goat. Yeah. We should go, uh, we should go there. No, no, that one. That one easy now. Uh -huh. I'm just drinking this so that I can ask him my own questions. It's not because of Buga. He didn't get it. You, you know, you, you know. Okay. Mention 10 female stand up comedians in Nigeria. See, just mention their stage name. If you annoy me, you will mention their real names and the year they started. And if you annoy me further, you mention the names of their husbands and the names of their children. Try me now. Okay, mention their name. No, no, let's, let's, name. let's just... Mm, uh, no, way. Mm, mm, no, don't, no. Even name, the, real name, stage name, husband name, children name. Ten even, of them. Even the ten. That's a lot. Eh? That's a lot. Did I cut your question for you? Yes. When you were happy now, now. Elelele began with your hands back. Elelele began. You are wasting time. We don't have time. See, my brother, hmm? before we go on the commercial break, yeah? You are stubborn, and I told you since. The fact that you play this your hair does not mean you understand. See this bad hair you are looking at. It's experience. I've suffered before you. But I try now. Were you there during the military era of Abacha and Babangi? You be, know what happened? I be Gen Z. <laughs> so that Gen China, Z, I, call for I will move four out of ten. That's like four out of ten. The passes now. Come do this thing. Where booby you are only. Look out! If I land you. <laughs>
questions if I want to ask questions. And if it's something that I saw coming, I may not even ask questions. I may just... You, I may even tell you I saw this what if, what if it's in person? Mm -hmm. But then, would it make a difference where? So, like, this person might just say, you put, can just be on third me language. <laughs> on a bike. <laughs> and the person say, babe, I cannot do it again. And you lose range. <laughs> so, what would change, what would change the scenario? For, like, does it matter where? Do you want to have like a fancy dinner like the film you were mentioning? No, 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 like about? Fine, and then, right. Or do you want to be on the street? No, carry me no fancy dinner. Or you might just on a run for treadmill. <laughs> or you not a job. You don't tell you, you all lose for your web. Now I don't turn attempted more than So what, which would it be? Because I'm like, in person, you have the closure that you want and a few injuries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's one place. It could be inside the car. You can't see that. Thanks for staying with us. Joining us is an author who is passionate about creating visually engaging, culturally relevant content for children. She's a founder of Imemi and has a desire to see steadily increasing literacy rates within her community. She's also the convener of Akada Children's Book Festival and the chairperson of the Association of Children Authors and Illustrators of Nigeria. Mm. Welcome with us, a woman that we love, Olubumi Aboderi Talabi. Thank you so much. I feel so bad that Mayam Good morning. Is not here like, Good morning. Should be you should have Mayam and Nima and, and Mayam and um, Moriah Maya because they are both they are authors for now. <laughs> my little daughter Kosi is uh -huh. going to be presenting. Yes, yeah, she is. is. Oh my God! Okay, yes, yes, that's fantastic. Yes, so we'll be meeting you again. Yes. Oh wow, what a small world. <laughs> okay, so the thing is, um, we've had you on the show. Um, our children are there's a, there are a lot of things influencing our children mm -hmm. now. Mm. And mm. it's important that we realize that these children are our future. What we do or don't do can make or mar them. Now, the Akada Festival, you're championing the course for creating interesting and relevant content for children that would engage their minds positively. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How has the response been since you've been doing this thing? Have you seen increase or you're thinking like you're losing them to TikTok and social media? So it's been fantastic. Once again, thank you ever so much for having me on your show. Um, it's been fantastic. When we first started the Akara Children's Book Festival back in 2019, we were able to scrounge and find about 11 or so authors. But this year, we had more than 120 some wow. books yeah. submitted for consideration mm -hmm. by indigenous authors, whether in Nigeria or in other parts of Africa or in the diaspora. So it's fantastic. That is the response, I would say. The children's book industry has bloomed mm -hmm. over the last five years, COVID notwithstanding. So I'm very, very encouraged because children love to read but they need entertaining relevant interesting mm -hmm. books to read and it's not just academic books we're very strong on academic books in our in our culture in our environment yes, yes. but we need to also understand that there is a place for storybooks for picture books for books read simply for pleasure just for the fun of it yeah it's amazing uh, when I got the news that um, Kosisa will be presenting her book um, at the Akada Festival, it's it was because such who is my daughter. first daughter, <laughs> so she's 14 and she wrote a book yes. and it was submitted and was you know yes, it was one of the ones, of the ones that would yeah. be presenting on the panel. It was such a joy, like wow! And when when she was told she had to send in a video, uh, it was like ah, mommy, I'm going to be presenting on the panel. It was huge. Now I know we've always had um, adult authors for yes. children's book. Yes. How are you enjoying the fact that there are a lot of children who are now engaged on writing children's books okay so that's an excellent question and i just want to qualify the children's books are books written by adults for children mm -hmm. children children authors or child authors are authors who are young children who are also writers the actually the truth is that the the best books for children are actually written by adults because adults see a wider world view and they can distill the information 
um, into 32 pages, which is the ideal number for a, a, a children's picture book. But it's really, really important to have young people encouraged a lot of people that want to write, it is really important to encourage them because they build, they build, they build, they grow, and they become the best sellers, you know, yes. of, of the future. Mm -hmm. So that's why we added something called the Young Authors Club and the Young Authors Panel. Mm -hmm. So authors who are under 18 who also send in their books for submission, we have a special segment for them and we bring them together to talk on the main stage. So we have different locations in the festival. So this year, Young Authors Panel is going to be on the main stage and they're going to talk about, you know, the host will interview them and they'll talk about their book, why they write, what inspired them. And the idea is to encourage other children mm. in the audience to also want to write. Amazing. Well done. I, I am a subscriber to the Additionals Readland and um, yes. I read Fantastic your book, but people. I have an idea of the kind of books I would like to influence children because of the power of influence of the kind of books I read as a child. And so when Sobi goes to the conservatory, was given to my child, we visited the conservatory twice because she ah. read it. And mommy, I want to go there. And the other one was a baby, so when he was a bit older, we went again. Mm. And uh, Miriam wrote a book, Picking Indigenous Names. That's the idea I want. I want kids to easily um, understand things because local names local languages exactly things common in our environment yes. are the things but well, you know we read um, yes the, any blight you know, yes. the, the ladybird uh, books yeah. and you know so local things happening here yes. Miriam's book all the names were from the north central um, uh, where she's from and you know these things like promoting to pronounce the name we got it the first time explain to them that these are Nigerian names, names as yeah. well yes and that was and you know different tribes yes. and all of that yes. how much more of such writing Mm -hmm. Because you know you do this festival every year, yes. and the Akada book has it has gone wide, you know, far. How much more of this kind of writing that you see encourages our own local content, our indigenous languages, culture? Yes. Do you see writers doing now? So it's this is why many of us started writing. We appreciate the fact that books come from all cultures, but there was a time when we were looking for children's books to read to toddlers to our children. Mm -hmm. There were only so many that were based in Nigeria or written by Nigerian authors and things like that. Most of them were from abroad. And there's nothing wrong with that. There is a place for that. It's really good to always learn about other cultures. But you also need to learn about your culture and know what's going on in your backyard. Exactly. Exactly. So that's why many of us just started writing and it has grown and grown and grown. And so you have more people from different professions understanding the need to write about your experience, for example, as a presenter and distill it into a children's book. Wow. Because people want to know. So wherever I go, I always tell people, have you written a book? You know, write a book. Why don't you write a book? So many people that are presenting this year are first time authors. Some of them are even like business corporate titans that you've heard of that are writing children's books. Wow. And it's not that they've given up their, their main job. It's just that they also understand the importance of writing things down. One author said there's a bedtime story that she always tells her children. And she, she just got the idea that, okay, let me just put this down formally, get an illustrator, and she's created a book. And we're showcasing it, you know, this year. So yes, we need to learn about culture, our culture, the different tribes in Nigeria, mm -hmm. the different neighborhoods in Nigeria, the different foods. So with some of my books, I talk about Begiri, Amalai, we do <laughs> so things like that. Sense. Yes, exactly. So Instead of talking about burgers and chips and fries, mm -hmm. not that there's anything wrong with burgers, chips and fries. I love them, but I also like Begiri, Amalai, and we do. And I feel like our foods, our names, our neighborhoods yeah. also need a place in beautifully produced children's books. And that's what we try to do. And we also showcase books that do the same thing. Because my kids, before they ever had, um, they, they were looking forward to having the Big Mac. And that was just because they saw it in a cartoon and they just felt like they had to eat it. But imagine if we're pushing our own show. Mm. Why, Kay? No, no. Um, just because I, I took my brother's kids abroad for the first time and they were all running to go to Starbucks. And I, why, why, why? <laughs> when they got there, they tasted it. Ah. I said, you see, it's because of all this nonsense that you're <laughs> And watching. <laughs> and watching. <laughs> you're all thinking Starbucks that it's something it's special. Horrible. You see now? They say, yeah, I said, oh. come back, come back and, and drink our kunu. 
drink yeah. our Zobo exactly. that all are really nice and healthy. Deserve mm -hmm. stories, but all those things are vital and important and as equally valuable as foods from other culture. And that's what we're trying to get across. That look, what we have here is also good. We also have these fabulous recipes. Like there's a new book that I've done that came out this year on the water. It's like an Eforiro recipe, mm. right? Set in Makoko. So it's like bringing things to the light that we consider commonplace, ordinary, local, but they're really valuable and other people from other cultures are interested. Just as people like to go to a Chinese restaurant, hmm. why can't people want to go to a Nigerian to restaurant? Nigerian restaurant. Yeah. You know, we just have to build ourselves up. Yeah. So that's point where Share people our experiences see us as you know beautiful. as a valid option: Italian restaurant, French restaurant, Nigerian restaurant. Mm. Mm. My, daughter, my granddaughter, Amala, and we do. She ate it. She finished. I said, Ah, you are eating Amala. I don't love it. <laughs> <laughs> but she ate it. She finished it. <laughs> so, uh, have you always known that you were going to do this? No. When did it start? Okay, so I, I, my background is publishing, newspaper publishing to be specific, and I've written articles, you know, public commentary, public policy type articles that have been published in, in papers, etc. But it was when I became a mother that I now recognized the gap. Mm -hmm. And if you look at ACAIN, the Association of Children's Authors and Illustrators in Nigeria, you'll find that the majority of the members are women, majority of the members are mothers who, when <laughs> they became mothers, they suddenly realized the need, the importance to read to their children. And when they were looking for books um, that were relevant to either their culture or their, their state, their religion or whatever, they couldn't find enough. So they started writing. So our story, there's a lot of commonality in our motivation for starting to write. And, and we continue because we see that the need is there. Um, and again, I just want to repeat that I'm not saying there's anything wrong with books that come from other cultures. It's just that we also need more from yeah. our culture. I, I, I should do something in this circle. I'm looking for a book. Yes, how that to has read and write in my language. I struggle to learn it in Lagos. Uh -huh. Born here, uh -huh. but do you want the where I am now? I want language. my kids in my native language. Yes, why not? The very original from where I'm from. Very important. My okay. grandma. I think you should. Yeah, I think you should. But, but, but don't be surprised, right? If the reception is not what you expect, no, uh, 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 because people the products available. Available, fantastic. I've checked. When, uh -huh. they, when we were at home for a while, yes. I wanted to teach them to read, and I noticed that they're always on their devices. Yes. So I wanted the content on YouTube, and yes. I couldn't find any. anything. Mm. And they bothered me, so the language. I'm yeah. about that. Well, talking about you, you know, because we're bringing you in as a woman that we love, we want to know more about you, okay. your journey. Um, your journey from being a publisher yes. to now encouraging other people to publish the right, to, public, to publish children-friendly content. content yes. And children engaging yes. content yes. and um, I, wa I, wanna, I wanted to share about the transition from core publishing into what I see now as a sort of advocacy you know and how do you put your business hat on when you're trying to advocate it's uh, because we're business people everybody here does business and sometimes it's confusing because you want to just educate people but then yes. you're also a business person. You yes, want to you earn money to. from this thing. You How do you find that balance? So right now, I doubt if there are any children's authors who are making money, <laughs> who are making their living from, of, yeah, of, of, yeah. So we all have to have another source of income because otherwise <laughs> we will be Gary and, you know, Kini every day. But um, it's, um, it's something that most people do you, you, for passion until the time when the industry is robust enough to... Um, to uh, to have enough to pay people. But as it is now, unfortunately, bookstores, you know I'm telling the truth, you don't pay authors. <laughs> you collect the books <laughs> and you hardly pay. You know, maybe there's like three or four that, that, you, that will actually pay you. But some others, they will just drag, 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 drag. So, that might be because of patronage also. So we, if we don't read, you know, like read we don't, buy, we don't buy books. You know, so we need it. Once the industry is more robust, mm -hmm. then perhaps it could be something that people can do you know, combined. But yes, as a business person, it is extremely tough. It's extremely tough. Um, the margins are razor thin. Ill illustrators are expensive. And then you have imports, imported, you know, books, are cheaper. which are cheaper, if you believe it or not. They come in, their landing costs are cheaper than books that we produce. I know. So the, it's a really, really tough landscape. And if not for the fact that there's a cause or there's a reason behind it, most people, you know, wouldn't do it. Or maybe people would do one and then just drop it. 
you know, mm. but when you start, you now see the hunger. The kids are saying, oh, you know, Auntie Bumi, Auntie Bumi, when are you writing the next one? Auntie Bumi, are you going to write for teenagers? Are you going to, you know, so you, you, you don't want to disappoint, so you, you know, you keep writing. Mm. Mm. So it's, it's, it's not really a business. It's always business good to hear, because like when for my now, daughter was I growing up, I bought her books all the time. Yes. So she grew up with that culture of reading. Yes. Because she was always, I, books, the books I would interest them first. Mm. So I'm, I like that you are, Producing books that will interest the kids with the illustrations. Yes. Yeah, because that's the only way I'm getting my grandson, who is very hates reading. Why is <laughs> I think he, it's come out. No, it's just to get them age appropriate books with interesting illustrations and on a topic that they like. So, like for a family outing, you could go to a fabulous bookstore, like one of the good bookstores, mm. like Roving Heights or, or even Skit Schools, right? Mm. Um, they have a really lovely selection of books and just let him pick and then just see what he gravitates towards. And if the book he picks is a, a book of his favorite movie, just allow it because the idea is to get him to start reading, reading you know, and People, please don't dismiss the power of bedtime story time. I'm also a champion of bedtime stories. And I know when I first started, I was told, oh, that's an Oimbo thing. We don't do that in Nigeria. Can I film you saying this? <laughs> uh, you cannot I'm <laughs> I, I, I need to send it to my daughter. <laughs> let's, let's, let's quickly talk about the change. Because I yes. No, no she can't finish saying what she's saying now. <laughs> she's a fan of bedtime stories. stories. And it's yes. important. Oh, yeah. Talk yes. about bedtime stories, please. So bedtime <laughs> stories are absolutely vital because they help children develop their communication skills, develop their confidence, and they also relax in the routine, knowing that mommy or daddy, no matter how busy you are, when you come home at the end of the day, you're going to give me that five, ten minutes of your time and just read to me or listen to me read so you can gauge my reading level. And then the other reason why bedtime stories are so important is because it's a chance for you to get quiet with your child. Mm. Because the day has been busy, 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 busy. And the child wants to tell you something that happened at school or that happened yeah. in the house when you are not around. Mm -hmm. I'm yes, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, um, you. and the, uh, the time that they have with you is an opportunity for them to tell you something that perhaps they didn't get a chance to tell you so, before. Oh. And it could be very, very important. So bedtime stories are not just a knowing both thing. I think that they are an all people also. thing. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, it honestly helps with building creativity, connection, you know, cognitive skills, everything. We used to so have their tales by Fantastic. Mm. That was a form of bedtime story. Mm. No, culturally. No, culturally, we used to gather around the fire. That's why they call it tales by moonlight. Yeah, to it was tell a stories night story. before you go to bed. Yeah. Night stories. Yeah. Thank you. That was Thank you. So you see, it's not just an annoying both things. Yeah. So I wanted you to talk, tell me why they changed from clever clog books to, yes. to women. Yes. And um, what are you working on again? Okay. So um, it's to do with this thing about the business being tough to run yeah so unfortunately we had to wind down um clever clogs because mm. the, the it just was not paying for itself it made absolutely no business sense whatsoever it was becoming a bit ridiculous so iwemi is now just the platform through which i present my books so any book that and i and i changed the name to iwemi meaning my books in my language yoruba mm -hmm. Um, so any book that I produce is presented on the platform called Iwimi My Books. And that's literally the sad story <laughs> behind it. I didn't come here to so, tell you sad so story. So I didn't know that. Uh, yes. what are you but but I'm happy that you're, 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 you're not giving up. No. So, no, no you and can't. I think that is important. I'm, I'm feeling very inspired to write um, yes. about my, the topic I love and write it to my child. That's, that's the, just by listening yeah. to you, that I want to write about financial intelligence to my child. Yes. And teach about important savings. And yes. then I put it together for him. So um, I'd like you to get, tell us what you're working on, on a yes. final note, and sort of a round off. Okay, so this year, um, I released three books. Toby at the Art Gallery, which is my absolute favorite, because mm -hmm. it talks about all sorts of different types of African art. Um, I should have bought copies to give you, or maybe I'll send it to you to give to your children. Thank you. Um, and then there's On the Water, which is set in Makoko. Again, I visited the place and I was inspired by um, the I'll site of a supermarket on water. And I thought, this is fabulous. So I did a book about that. And many people were like, one, they didn't know that there was an area where people lived on water, two, that they had a supermarket on water. I'm like, well, there you go. This is the power of children's books. So it also showed the entre entrepreneurial um, side of young children. Um, and of course, there's the Akara Children's Book Festival coming up on Saturday, to which I invite everyone. Um, at the festival, we have book readings, we have story time sessions. All the book readings, all the story time sessions are completely free. You can just register, attend the festival. Um, am I allowed to say the website? 
akadafestival.org. Just come to the festival. We have workshops for parents, workshops for children, workshops for, um, for professionals. So um, if you want a fun family day out, just come to the festival. So that's what I'm Because you mentioned the restaurant, I was, would we'll have to send you invoice because yes. even though it is free, but it's you're free. not actually, you know. Yeah, encouraging children to read. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Thank you thank for doing you. what you're doing. Thank, thank you for actually driving a mm. course that is impacting on the next generation. Thank you. And I'm sure many people have been inspired to write. Nima is going to write a book about her language. We'll hold you accountable on that. She's going to write another one about being a lawyer. We'll hold you on that. You know? She's committed to write about dancing. Yes, We're going to hold you on that. <laughs> Did I say I, was, I wanted to write while I was? I'm going here. to write about something, and we're all going to get writing. We're going to get all reading. I say, all I can say is I'm going to buy your books. All right, that's, that, that's good students. enough too, so that it would um, thank you. We'll fund the industry. Thank you all so much for joining us on the show. Thank you, ma'am, and thank you, viewers. You can catch the replay. It's been a loaded conversation and a productive Wednesday so far. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Bye. Bye.